Welcome to NISA Now, week eight in NISA action. Kick off with Michigan Stars visiting Chicago House AC. Two clubs going in a bit of opposite directions here. Michigan Stars on a bit of a streak, six matches in a row getting points. Chicago House, on the other hand, really struggled their opening season, and a lot of it has to do with not being able to score goals. No goal scored since week two. That's a tough way to go if you're hoping to win some matches. So let's get this match going. Stars looking threatening in the first half. We've talked about it. Their ability to strike back on the counter. And there it is. Ball feeding forward to Alexandra Frank, who puts the cross into the box, but unfortunately cannot find a head. Novotny sort of bobbles it, and then it's cleared that would continue. Here's another opportunity, another cross in. Novotny and the defender get to it, but still looking shaky for House on defense. Second half still scoreless. Ball moving around. Chicago House looked like they've got an opportunity here. The cross in goes out. Louis Bennett dribbles. You've probably seen this online. The shot from deep. Look at that beauty. Beats McGruva goes in off the post. It's a goal for Chicago House. The first goal at home for Chicago House, Louis Bennett. Congratulations. Celebrate. You celebrate like you've never done it before. But 15 minutes later, Stars would get the opportunity. Let That might be as easy as a goal as you're going to get for Merrick. Merrick just, just, you know, flicks it in. Thank you. That's And Novotny, who struggled to hold on to the ball, gives it up in the box, and Merrick took advantage. And I want to see this. I believe that's, uh, that's Michigan Stars' uh, supporters. Michigan Stars get the 1-1 draw on the road. Has to feel a little bit disappointing. You would have expected them to do a little better against Chicago House. Let's get to Matthews. Stumptown on a bit of a roll here. Now two wins in a row playing consistently and looking good under Coach Underwood, really seeing some polish that we haven't seen before. Let's not forget that two of those wins, one of them was against Detroit City from last week. That's a big one, obviously. Detroit City's first loss of the year. NGS doesn't need me to remind them. New Amsterdam, on the other hand, not a gimme. New Amsterdam has shown flashes of brilliance at times and coming off, let's not forget, a win of their own against uh, Maryland Bobcats. So this is a good matchup between two teams who have both had success but, but have trouble showing consistency. The key is who would get the win in Matthews. By the way, beautiful park. I don't know that I've seen a better looking park in Nisa. Here is something fun. You know, we've talked a lot about the Stumptown like sort of goal of building a a real fan base, something organic, real home fans, and holy cow, we've got smoke. Smoke, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. Hopefully they aren't burning Kevin the tree. Hopefully that's just a flare as far as we know it is, but Everyone loves smoke, doesn't matter where you go. 11 minutes in, we got a long series with Stumptown in the attack. Coach Underwood has really got his players focused on defense and on offense, smooth as silk, moving the ball around, just looking for their chance, playing smart, playing clean, looking for opportunities. This was almost a goal, but instead, corner kick, again, in attack, looking good. Speaking of looking good, look at those trees. My God, I know I live in the desert, but that is beautiful. Be I'm expecting a Sasquatch to come wandering out. Sadly, no Sasquatches were sighted this evening. Maybe hidden by the smoke, we don't know. We've got a opportunity though for Stumptown here in the 11th minute. We've got an opportunity to put a ball into the box. Love this play. Ball goes around, look at this. Comes in, tipped out, Stripling is waiting for it. Boom, goal, Stumptown, Colin, Stripling, gun it in off a defender into the goal. Nice shot and runs to the sidelines to celebrate with who? Coach Rod Underwood. He's got his players playing well. And they clearly appreciate his work. That score line would hold all the way to the end of the match. New Amsterdam has the attacking talent. They can score if given the opportunity. Batiz crosses it back and look at this shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. KG bobbles the ball in goal for a second, but grabs it off the post to hold on and get the win. Another clean sheet for Gonzalez, putting in some great work for Stumptown. 
Stumptown wins their third in a row and move up the table a bit more. New Amsterdam has to feel like they left something on the table with all of their firepower and not able to get a goal in. They fall to seventh on the table. Off to Detroit. This was the match of the week. First place, Detroit City hosting second place, LA Force. Let's not forget the last time they played here. LA Force lost on an own goal in the spring championship. This battle would determine who reigns supreme for another week anyway. Lots of chances early in this bat. This is 10 minutes in. LA Force pressing the attack. Silky smooth on the ball. They just are. This ball would go into Casillas. Is that a bicycle? Uh, no. No, no, it's not. Late in the second half, score still nil-nil. Maxi Rodriguez with the beautiful pass to Rutz, who heads it towards the corner, but saved by the normally solid Brandon Gomez. Foreshadowing. Two minutes later, seems like we're about to get out of here without a score in the first half, but Detroit City still pressing. Ball goes into Rutz. Gomez punches it out, takes himself out of the play, and who's there? Venegas. Flicks that ball in. Easy as you like. Detroit City is always plus one. And that was a plus one type of goal with, uh, looks like plus one in uh, extra time. Ah, let's get into the second half. Still lots of chances here. Cheney holding the ball up, flicks it to Casillas, who would take it up the left-hand side. But look at the bottom of your screen. Ivanovsky is faster than anyone else on that field. And he is wide open. Beautiful shot. Beat Steinwasher, but does not beat the post. That was the best chance for LA Force all night. 1-0, Detroit City holds on to beat. LA Force goes to 7-1-1. One, one. LA Force takes their first loss. Let's get to San Diego. Chattanooga forced to travel to beautiful San Diego to take on Ot4 after being hard done in their last home match with... Uh, all the confusion that eventually led to a draw that for Chattanooga has to feel like a loss. So off to San Diego. Couldn't ask for a better day for this match. Two clubs trying to reestablish themselves. Chattanooga sort of fallen lower than expected. And Ott for towards the bottom. Let's get it going. Early in the match, Ott for threatening with a throw in. This in the seventh minute, um, off the right-hand side of the pitch. Ball goes into the box, and look at that beautiful pass back. Cross goes in. Looks like the header's going to get there, but instead it's cleared. Chattanooga lives to fight another day. Very end of the first half. Plenty of chances for both sides in this one, but this was a solid one for Ott4. Edward Benito was at times a one-man wrecking ball. Slips the ball across to Jerry Destunes, who has a rip, but the ball is expertly blocked by a CFC defender. We end the first half scoreless. But Ott4 had a taste, and they wanted more. This very early in the second half, Edward Benito again steals the ball off a careless pass on the back line. Ball cycles a bit, but Benito's moving into open space. He's ready for that pass, comes back to him, and Benito takes the shot, beats Reddington. Reddington can't even do anything. Ball goes in. Benito is playing well. He says, I love you, and yeah, why not? He loves it. But there's still fight in Chattanooga. Corner kick. This about 10 minutes later. Chattanooga has to feel like this is slipping away on the road. This corner kick, a chance into the box, cleared expertly. But look at this beautiful cross back in. Cameron Woodfin to the head of Alec McKinley, the equalizer. I don't think I've seen a better looking cross. Cameron Woodfin, wow. 10 minutes later, long throw gets pushed ahead by a CFC header, and look who's all alone. Marcus Dagelstad, he don't miss. That is the winner on the road, 65th minute. Was it a birdie? Heck yes, it was a birdie. Celebrate it. Look at Bement. He's thrilled. They're pumped. That is a win on the road for Chattanooga. Has to feel like payback from the gods. But thank yourselves, boys, because you worked for that one. 3-1-4, one, Chattanooga goes. Ought four falls to 2-1-5 with a loss at home. Let's keep it in Southern California where Cal United Strikers were hosting the Bobcats. If you wanted a goal, 
It came early. This sort of nothing pass gets threaded forward to Christian Thierjung, who does all the work on his own. Look at this play. Wow. That is a goal score. The all-time leading goal scorer in Nisa, Christian Thierjung, with the early goal in the first minute. Uh, unbelievable. But just because you're down doesn't mean you're out. And the Bobcats were pressing, trying to get an opportunity, and they would here. This ball would fall to Kay Banjo at the top of the box, and he took a shot that took an amazing dive by Cal United Strikers goalkeeper Jean Antoine, who had himself a whale of a day. Here's that Banjo shot. Woo! That was almost a goal right there and could have equalized for the Bobcats. This in the late in the second half, ball goes forward again. Lots of chances. Antoine way out of the box, kicks the ball up, misplayed by the defender. Chance for the Bobcats, and again, ball's deep in his box. And Antoine, brick raw, stops that thing, doesn't let it go in, holds on for the win. Maryland Bobcats, plenty threatening on the road, but Cal United win, go to 4-3-2, and two, stay at the top or near the top of the table. Maryland Bobcats 2-2-5. Two, two, and five. Tier Jung's goal is enough for the win. Let's look at the table. Detroit City sits on top. Yep, 22 points. LA Force 16. Cal United 15. Stumptown in fourth. Michigan Stars, Chattanooga, New Amsterdam, Maryland Bobcats. Ot4 and Chicago House rounding out the table at the end of week eight, the halfway point. And here's your soccer almanac stat of the week. Nisa goalkeeper with the cleanest sheets. Yeah, you probably guessed it. Nate Steinwasher, 24 games played, 16 clean sheets. There's a reason they call him the Stein Monster. Tatenda McRuva, 25 games, 11 clean sheets. Brandon Gomez with LA Force, 26 games, 8 clean sheets. And Alec Reddington, 20 games, 7 clean sheets. The best of the best in Nisa history. That's it for Nisa Now. We'll be back with next week with all the highlights from the match. Hope you've got a great one. We're halfway through the season, folks. See you soon.